Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to walk through how did you do it file attachments inside of a Power App portal uh, using subgrids. So stay tuned. Welcome back. If you've been following this series so far, you've been able to build with me a pretty nice Power App portal in less than an hour time that walks you through creating a financial aid application. Also, we had in our last video, we left off with, with a nice web form, which is kind of a wizard inside of Power Apps portals. And when I hit next, you'll see that we have our financial disclosures. What we want to accomplish in this video is the ability to upload your tax records into this disclosure right here. There's a lot of steps to this. So hold your hats because this can be a little bit longer video because there are a lot of steps and a lot of places you can slip up at. Matter of fact, even recording this video, I've had this in probably my third or fourth time. It's like, ah, I forgot that step. I've been doing this for now a year uh, at Paris Portals and I forgot all these different pieces that were mandatory. So I'm going to walk you through some of the mistakes that I made and what those mistakes will look like as we kind of progress through this. Okay, so here's our steps we're going to do. And we might have add, add a few more in the way here. All right, so first of all, we have to modify our form. So we're gonna create, uh, create a form for, for, for uh, financial evidence for taxes. Okay, that's gonna be on the Dataverse side. Then on the Dataverse side, we need to modify um, the portal form to show a subgrid. Okay, that's step two. Uh, once we do that, it will automatically show in portal. So success, it will look like success, but we'll have some permissions problems. So we'll have to set permissions, uh, permissions to the, the tax residents. All right. Then we're going to want to create an entity form to add a new record. Okay, that'll be inside the PowerX portal side. Then we want to go ahead and modify the metadata. Okay, so the, and there's one more step in here, and that'll be permissions again. All right. So this, there's a lot of steps, as you can see here. There's six steps at a minimum that we're going to have to do to make this happen. So let's walk through from top to bottom each step along the way, and I'll show you what will look like in your Power App portal as we go through these steps also. Okay, so there are a few ways of uploading files in Power Apps portals. Um, I've, I've, I have those documented in a previous video if you want to see that also. We're going to focus though on uploading with a financial, uh, financial evidence with a note instead of Power Apps portals. So we'll, we'll focus our time on that because we want to add extra metadata to that, that, that attachment. Like what tax year is this for? Uh, who is it for? Those kind of things we want to add to this as well. So let's go and start our journey. So our first step we're going to do is we're going to open up our solution that we created in our first video, our Pragmatic University one. We're going to go under uh, the student, sorry, the financial aid uh, table here, and we're going to create a new form. Now mine might look a little different than yours, and that's completely fine. I'm going to go up top where it says new form, and I'm going to add a new form. Okay. And once I do that, it will go out for a few seconds here. There we go. And it's creating a new form here. Now, yours might look a little different. It might be a two-column form versus a one-column form. If you want to change that, you'll want to select the form, go to formatting, and make it one column versus two column. That's, that's completely up to you. The important part is that you have the tax year here. You have the that you don't have to have the student here. It's going to be automatically assigned, so you could choose to hide that or not. I'm going to go ahead and choose to hide that one, or actually remove it all together is fine. Uh, and you could choose to hide the owner. It's not required. Uh, Power Apps portals will go ahead and automatically hide that for you if you want. And by the way, my head was in the way a moment ago. Let's get rid of my head here. And if you want to make that one column, you select the whole form, you go to formatting, and there's a one column option right there. I just noticed my head was in the way, and for that, I apologize. All right, so here we go. So we have our form now ready to go. If you don't see the timeline control here, you can always add that again under components and the very bottom is timeline. Timeline allows us to add notes and attachments to this record. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a name. I'm gonna go ahead and give it, take it from, the, the, not the tab name, excuse me. I'll go ahead and go over to my form here. There we go. And I'll change, uh, let's see here. 
Okay, let's go ahead and make sure we have the whole form selected. There we go. And right now it says main form. Let's change this to portal uh, financial evidence. I can't, I can't, I have a trouble spelling financial today, so financial evidence. Okay. So I'm giving the name portal so I know like it's a, it's a portal app. You may also choose to, to change the tabs if you want. You can change from general to just uh, you know tax info, whatever you want to call it. Okay, right now it's called general. You can call it whatever you want. Not really required for this, but it will come into play a little bit later. So you'll you might see general and I might see tax info. I'll hit save and publish. The first step is now done. Now on to our next step. Okay, the reason why I saw the timeline control, by the way, in case you're curious, is because at the table level, I have attachments turned on. So I'm gonna publish this, make sure it's published. But on the, the table level, can okay, I let that publish out there? There it goes. So at the table level, back in the previous screen, in case, you may wanna confirm that you have the case, I'll get this, this in your case as well. Uh, under uh, settings, make sure you have attachments turned on. All right, so that allows you to, to attach files to this Power App portal. Okay, success there. So our next step is to go through and go back to the uh, step and we're gonna add that subgrid now. So we're gonna go back to the, uh, the student aid application entity. Okay, we'll go to forms and go to our portal web form we created in our, in our second or third uh, video. All right. With that now done, we want to go and let me get rid of my face so you can get a full full picture of this. Uh, with that now done, we want to go through and we want to go to the financial disclosures and we're gonna put all of our uploads right here. So I'm gonna go over to the plus button with components. I'll scroll down and I'm looking for subgrid. I'm gonna drag the subgrid right underneath household income and I only wanna show you the related uh, tax records for this application. So I'm gonna go to uh, related and I'll pick uh, financial evidences. And you'll see the view name it shows down here that, that it's, it's gonna use is active financial evidences. We can always change that later if you want uh, over here on the right. Once you hit done, you can always change it if you want on the right here as well. Okay, it's gonna show a maximum of four years of taxes uh, as you hit, hit next, next, next as it does it. But you do want to change the name. Look at this. It has this, this control name. as new SG control, yada, yada, yada. Let's definitely fix that. We'll call this tax records. All right. Our subgrid name, I'll call this subgrid underscore tax, tax records. This will come into play later. So you can definitely want to, want to change the name. Otherwise, you'll see subgrid one, subgrid two, and it's really confusing on which one you're selecting. All right. So we have our tax records. Now you'll see it has this tax records up top here. All right, looks pretty good. Let's save and publish this. And now all of our back office stuff is done. And now we're ready to go back to our Power App portal. Uh, and I'm gonna open up the portal management application to do that. Okay, so let's see, first of all, how this looks in the Power App portal. I'm gonna go ahead and browse this. You don't have to do this. I'm gonna browse this though. And we'll see what was the impact of that change we just made. All right, the browse again, that flushes the cache and reloads it. And I do that by editing the portal. So you select the portal name, hit edit, and that will take you back here again. We'll hit next. And now, perfect. We see tax records, we see the subgrid, but we don't have permissions to that data yet. So that's our next step. Bubba, here in this case, does not have access to the records underneath his application. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the portal management app and we're gonna to go to our permission set for the financial aid records. This time, I'm gonna go ahead, as I scroll down, I'm gonna create a new child entity permission. And this is gonna make it where, when I'm looking at application one, I wanna see all the records for application one. So the information here will be called, I'll call this uh, uh, tax records. And I'll call it parent, so I know it's the parent records. I'll then select uh, financial aid, or financial um, financial evidence, there it is. Financial evidence, oh, I just passed it. There we go. The website is, of course, the same website we've been using. The scope this time will be parent, which again, that means I'm looking at application one, show me all the records underneath uh, financial application one, okay? The relationship, there's a relationship between that financial application and 
uh, and the actual tax records. That's the relationship. And I created that lookup in our first video that created that relationship. And then I'm gonna allow you to go ahead and read and create new ones and be able to delete them and, and do all sorts of records here that you wanna do, including write files. Okay, so I'll give you the full meal deal. I'll hit save and close. And then save and close. Now let's see what the impact of that is. So again, I'll go ahead and hit the browse website. Just go ahead and refresh the cache. Okay, which then refreshes this. And my goal is to not see that red, that red area down there. So let me go ahead and hit the next button. There we go. And now we're seeing it says no records display. So success. All right, so third step now done. Now we want to create our fourth step, which is our entity, entity form. The entity form is going to be, when I hit the create button, what form is going to launch to allow you to upload a new document. Okay, so that's our next step in this, this journey here. Let's go back to our entity forms. That is a lot of steps, right? I'm going to go to entity forms, and I'm going to create a new entity form. This one will be called a uh, new tax record. All right. I'll look for financial evidences. There it is, financial evidence. Uh, the form name is going to be the portal financial evidence one that you just created a moment ago. Then what tab do you want to hit? Remember I called mine tax info, yours might be called general. Absolutely fine. I'm going to be inserting for this website right here. Okay. Turn on entity permissions. Now, there's a few more things we have to do on this one. This one's a little more complex than the last entity form we created in the previous video. For this one, you'll notice you can, do uh, you want to turn on caption? No, let's forget all that stuff. You want instructions to be in this? You might or might not want that. Uh, for additional settings though, this is where we want to go. So for additional settings, I'm going to start by scrolling down and I want to go ahead. We showed this in our last video. As you hit save, associate that note, that, that financial record with the student, okay, there's a, there's a student column, which relates to column, and this, the portal record is a contact, which relates to students. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and say, whenever you hit save, go ahead and associate it automatically with the student record. This is one way of doing it. I also could have had that field in the, in the portal, um, in that one form, and have, you know, put it in the default at that point. This is a lot easier though for my end users. Next, I wanna turn on attachments. I can store those attachments either in Azure Blob Storage, or in my case, a note attachment. I'll do a note attachment to make it keep it really simple. And I'll do notes over here for the record type. And let's. And we can also change, you know, do you want to allow certain kinds of uh, file types? What is the label? I'll call this uh, upload tax info, tax file, whatever you want to call it. Is this required? Yes, it's required. And if you don't do it, I'm going to say, uh, oops, you forgot to upload your taxes. Of course, put whatever you want there. All right. You can also, again, restrict the file types that are accepted. And here's the error message it's going to get if you try to upload an MPG file or whatever. All right. With that done, this next step is now done. So let's save and close this. So we've done our four, four or five of our steps now. Our, our fifth step we have to do is to go back to our web form. Okay, keep in mind the difference between an entity form and a web form. Entity form is going to basically open up a given table and allow you to uh, up, up, update that one table. A web form is creating that wizard approach that we've been in. So it gives us a lot more flexibility. So let's go back to our web form, go to our web steps, and we want to go to the financial disclosure tab. This time, when I go to uh, under related. This is not especially obvious at first, but we're going to go to metadata. Now this metadata allows you to overwrite any option inside of Power Apps portals. So I'm going to hit new metadata right here, and you'll see that we can overwrite attributes, we can overwrite notes, we can overwrite a, a section or a tab. In our case, we care about overwriting the subgrid, which is in that form. So let's select the subgrid. It'll ask us, well, what subgrid do you want to manage? Well, we have one called, I think it was called financial something, or tax, there is tax, uh, whatever it's called. That's our record. And what do you want to override? Well, I want to make sure that list, there's a create button. So I'm going to hit this little create button right here. So when you, when you see this list, there's going to be a create button that's going to link you to a web, to a uh, entity form. Okay, you can also go to web page. And then what form do you want to go to? New tax record, makes sense. What do you want to call that button? Upload tax record. OK, 
Okay. And then I'll hit save. And save and close, and save and close, and save and close. All right, let's see how we are now. We're almost done. There's one more step we're forgetting. Let's just take a look at the impact of what we've done so far. I'll hit browse website. Now we're gonna see when I hit next again, we'll see a, a now a create button. That's, that's not called create. I, I gave it a special name, I forgot what I called it, but you'll see it has upload tax record. That was the impact of that. That's the inst When I hit that, I see my tax year, but I'm missing my button here for actually creating the note. That's because of permission problems still yet again. The permission problem is I don't have the permissions as Bubba Smith to the note entity. So let's fix that last issue now. So let's go over to our entity permissions. And in our last step, I'm gonna create a new entity permission. I'll call this uh, notes global for the time being. Okay, we'll point to notes. There it is, annotation. Okay. The website, of course, you've seen this a million times. You've seen this a million times. I'll make it global as well, like I did last time. And I'm gonna allow you to go ahead and, and uh, create a note. And I also wanna give you the ability to delete a note later as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach these. It, don't worry, it's only gonna be on the ones the records we're seeing right now. Uh, let's save that. But after you save, the next step is to go to web roles and make sure it's associated with our student web role. Okay, hit add again, and then hit save and close. All right, now again, let's hit browse website and let's see the impact of this. All right, so when I open up this now, okay, there we go, refresh, hit next. And this time I'll hit upload tax record. No, oh, we still are missing something. Okay, let's, let's figure out a few debug steps that could be the problem here. First debug step I always do is sometimes the sync, the configurations get out of sync, so I'll sync and then I'll browse that one more time to make sure that that's not causing the problem. But we've missed a step somewhere along the way. Now, this is why I was mentioning before, I wanna kinda of show you some problems that could happen as we do this. So I like to, to break things and figure out what, what went wrong. So first of all, that looks to be fine. Okay, that's the first little debug step sometimes I'll do that, that might fix it. So let's go through the steps and make sure we got it. So first of all, let's look at the permissions. You can see in the permission set that I forgot to check. I thought I checked it. I must not have checked the, the no, the yeses here. So let's go back to, oh, sorry, not, not that one, excuse me, notes. No, it is all checked. So let's go back and just confirm. Okay, looks good. Uh, it is, students have rights to it, so that's good. It's global rights to the notes table. Perfect, oh, oh, and you see the problem. I did notification and not notes. All right, let's go ahead and hit save and close. <laughs> And let's go and hit browse one more time. Okay, it's always a little steps, right? Like spelling, for example. All right, so if you saw what I did there, I did notification and not notes. So make sure you select notes for that global permission, not notification. And now we hit, we hit upload tax record. Now we'll see choose file. There's our, our hint that we put. If I hit submit, you'll notice it says, oops, you forgot to add your file. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and upload any file we want here, like this little, you know, whatever. Hit submit. And there we go. So that record's been submitted. We have evidence F1000. There is our record. And when I hit submit, this latest application actually has that attachment inside of it. So from a web admin side, by the way, uh, we'll show you in a later video how they'll see it also from a administration, from a back office perspective. That'll be our last video as we go into this series. All right, great job, guys. We have now got a files attached now. And then our next video that we're gonna do, we're gonna go through some little more styling issues and kind of how we kind of fix the way this look and feel is. Before we do that, we'll do conditional splits that when you say, hey, uh, I want to have housing, how do I conditionally show you screens or not? So that'll be our next video in this series. Uh, thank you for, for, for watching this. Uh, please do subscribe so you get all the latest notifications when we release new videos in the series. And this is also part of our boot camp we have at Pragmatic Works. We also have virtual mentoring and hackathons that we do. You can find more information about that at pragmaticworks.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.